Good afternoon, everyone. How is everybody doing so far? Okay. The topic that uh, Leah had put together was, it's not too late. After today's session, I got so scared. I'm not sure if anybody in here has been scared, but I got so scared that I said, it's never too late, but also, what are we going to do about it? Which brings me to why I'm here. I want to thank Leah for putting this together. I remember Leah and Moishi when they first came to my office, which was in my home. Yep. At how many years ago? I don't know how many years ago that was. Ten years? Okay. It's been a long, long time, and congratulations for being able to put on such a wonderful event at ITSCON 2019. Now, what I want to talk about is the fact that we live in an imprisoned system. We are prisoners of our own making. We live in this prison, we set up our prison ourselves. The difference between this prison and Otisville is that there are no locks on the door. You can push the door open anytime you want and anytime you're ready. It's up to you to do that. So just to give you a little background, I grew up in a small town near here called Brooklyn, New York in Borough Park. Some of you might know the place, some of you might not, but growing up, in a Holocaust survivor's family, I was very, not dysfunctional, but it wasn't a dysfunctional family, it was a functional family, but it was very scary. I grew up in yeshiva, it was very, very strict, and my parents, my father was strict, my mother wasn't as strict, and uh, at the age of 15, I decided that I'd rather be like my mother than be like my father. And my mother was a very outgoing person, a very talkative person. And I'd rather be like her than be like my father. So I got into business at the age of 15. I, because I couldn't study, I didn't want to study, whatever the case was, I didn't like school that much. So when I came home, every single night I started a business, I read the Jewish press every single uh, uh, week, it was a weekly paper, I read line for line, word for word, everything that was in there, including the one ads. You can tell how bored I was. Now, what happened here was that when I saw in the want ads sections that people were selling refrigerators or stoves or dryers, wash machines for a certain reason because they wanted to buy a new one but they had to sell the old one in order to fund the new one, I decided to become a matchmaker. So I manipulated and I did all kinds of things to get into the business and I got into the business and for one year I was the most successful gentleman in Brooklyn. Now I'm talking about gentlemen, I'm talking about a, a kid in Brooklyn. If I earned $150 or $200 a month, I was the richest kid in Brooklyn. When my father found out that I was in business, he unplugged the phone from the jack in my room. He didn't know that I was in the business. I made a cardinal mistake and the mistake was that I had someone drop off a refrigerator, if I remember correctly, and my father asked my mother, what is this junk doing in the yard? We were living on 51st Street, and he said, it's not junk, it's David Stern's business, David's business. And he said, what do you mean David's business? He's not supposed to be in business, he's supposed to be in yeshiva learning, studying. So he came up, he was so angry, he unplugged the business from me. But one thing he couldn't unplug is the people business inside me. I was so involved with people on a daily basis. I loved people to help people no matter what. At the age of 18, I decided to get into the banking business. Usually people go to work with 47th Street, they go to work for their parents, they go into the diamond business. I decided to go work for myself. Now, I was getting paid $86 a week. I was the first Hasidic guy with a beard and pious. I look like you, Mr. Tesla. And yep, there, there it is. And uh, I, I was the first one to be behind the counter and cash people's check. Six years later, within six years, I went to school. They realized that they have someone here, here who has a little bit of talent. So they sent me to school. So I learned how to be an executive. And I became an, an elected vice president of a particular bank and I was at the age of 24. At the age of 22, I was in touch with someone in California, someone that I met in California, who told me, David, you live in a bubble of crap. You eat crap, smell crap, eat, you know, everything about you is crap. And now that you lifted the bubble a little bit and you see there's an outside world, all of a sudden you're putting it down until you get out and stay comfortable outside that bubble, it's going to be a difficult time. 
and I decided to move to California. I had an opportunity to move to California for banking business, and in May of 1978, the federal government decided that they're going to change their laws and the rules, and they're going to allow banks to be open on Shabbos. And since I'm a Shabbat observant, so I couldn't be available, not even in case of emergency, it nullified my contract. And by the way, my contract was good for $25,000 a year, which was a fortune of money in 1970s. There was a fortune of money. So what do I do now? So by mistake or by accident, or by God's whatever, I got into the jewelry business. I knew nothing about the business of selling. And I've been in the business of sales since then. So for the last 40 years, I've been in sales. And that's what I've been doing to myself and to my family. I learned a lot in the business. I had a mentor at 24 who lived in Las Vegas. I moved to California. I couldn't come back because I was embarrassed to come back and I'm gonna uh, come back and everybody had a party for me, a goodbye party. Now everybody's gonna say, David, what happened to you? So it was too embarrassing, so I wasn't gonna come back, so I had to stay there. But I was successful because I listened to what he had to say. It was very, very difficult. I liked the nightlife at night. I'd go out to clubs because I lived in West Hollywood. So I would go to nightclubs and I'd go to, the, during the day I'd be in a pool. So when I wasn't working, every time I wasn't working, I was doing something stupid. So therefore, I, it gave me an excuse of why I should be where I am. And I never really saw the fact that I am losing something by going to nightclubs at night. That the fact that if I stay up till 2, 3, 4 in the morning, I can't get up in the morning to go to a meeting to be on time. I didn't know that if I hang out in the pool during the day when I should be working, I'm not earning any money. And I was at that time a commission salesperson. So I wasn't making any money. I didn't know all this. At the end of six years, I did very, very, very well. I learned a lot about the business of selling. And I came back to New York because the company closed up, and I went to work for a company that some of you might know, B&H Photo. And I was a salesman in the store. I hated the fact that I had a job from 9 to 5 or 9 to 6 to stand behind the counter and to take care of customers all day long. That's what, something that I did not like. So I got lucky, and I found a mentor. Someone who introduced me to a mentor, his name is Bruce Lloyd. And I was one of 12, and he passed around one of these things. You know what this is? It's a mirror. And he said, David, what do you see? I said, I see a nose, glasses, face. He says, I see that as well. I don't have to ask you. For that, I didn't ask you that. What do you see inside you? And this is something what Josh had talked about with the Bitbean gentleman before, uh, a little bit before. He talked about personal development. I was the greatest salesman since sliced bread. But I was, I, was I the greatest person? I'm not so sure. Was I able to communicate how I felt? I'm not so sure. Because I was able to tell you what you need to hear and what you need to do. But I was not able to listen. So as I joined this uh, group with Bruce Lloyd for the, last, the next 6 to 18 months, I was in constant fighting mode because I wasn't ready to listen. But I made a decision that I'm going to become a student and I'm going to learn how to live and how to personally develop. And that's what changed my life. From that moment on, I moved to companies like Motorola. I had clients like Estee Lauder, JP Morgan, um, uh, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb, Oppenheimer's, different types of companies because I learned that it was not all about me, it was about them. It was about other people. If I can learn how to listen and how to communicate with others and ask them how they were doing instead of telling them, oh, I was a great, blah, 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 you know, instead of yakking away, listening, asking questions, it would make a big difference in my life. And I went on from that, from that moment on, it was all success. I uh, trained for a company in California, uh, I, don't, I don't think they're around anymore, over 14,000 salespeople. Because the business of selling, I understand the business of selling. I understand the business of personal development that we have to personally develop. And I learned how to merge the two. And once I merged the two, I was able to be more successful. And I came up with a book, which is the title, Are You For Real? And how did I come about this? I went to work for a company again called B&H Photo. And they asked me to run the department of tourism. 
And I said, what do I know about tourism? I don't know anything about tourism. She said, what do you mean? You're always coming and going from somewhere. You need to know something. So I took the job because I needed the money. And I don't know if you ever heard of this before, but we take jobs because we need money. That's why we take jobs. Not because we know what the job entails, not we know what, that we know what it would, the company is expecting of us. We don't ask questions. We just need a job. We need to make some money. So that's what we do. But I learned that if I want to be successful, I have to have goals. So when I went back to my mentorship group and they asked me, David, what are your goals? What kind of goals do you have and why do you want to achieve that goal? So when I talk to my clients today and I say to them, you know, we have, uh, he says he wants to get rich. He's got a lot of expenses. He's got, he wants to be wealthy. He says, well, get online. There's a line from Brooklyn to the Pacific West Coast. There's a lot of people who want to get wealthy. How and why? Climbing the ladder to success step by step to the big point of owning a home or whatever it might be, the big goal that you have. If you have a family and you have a bunch of kids and you need to support someone or a bunch of people, what, what, what does it cost you to live every single month? I have a client who told me last week that, oh, it cost me from 10 to 15,000. This is, that's 5,000. Well, what do you mean you don't know the detail? How can you not know the detail? How come you don't know where you want to go? And who do you communicate with that you can actually help, it can help you get there, whether it's a sales manager, it's a business owner, or it's a wife, or a husband, whatever the case might be. Can you get there? The answer is yes. You can personally develop and you can get to anywhere in life you want to go if you know how to get there. By the way, Leah, I don't know if, you, if you're not here, they talked about hacking. Did you see this hacker today? How he hacked into a company? Uh, you know, it scared the hell out of me. You want to tell me that someone can hack into my computer, into my cell phone, and take my money away, my hard-earned money? I can, whatever I saved up, they can take that away from me? But I turn it around and I say, are you your own hacker? Do you steal your time from your own self that you don't know where you're going? You just like they say in Yiddish, topping a vant. You're just grabbing onto the wall, whatever is there, whatever sticks, that's what we're going to do. There's something to it. So let me ask you a question. What are your goals? You have goals. Everybody in this room has a goal. What are they? In detail. In detail. It might be numerous goals. It might be a whole bunch of different goals. But what are they? And why? And what are you doing to get to that point? That's what we need to know. That's what you need to know. So we talk about, Joel talks about personal development. Personal development is key. You have to personally develop. And I'll tell you something. If you do, it's a process and it's going to take time. Time stands for things I must earn. And you're going to get there if you do the right thing at the right time. Now, it doesn't mean that we're not going to screw it up sometime. We are. So what? Big deal. But we're going to do something different. What I want to do now is I want to introduce you to the golden key to success. The golden key to success is basically my ebook. It's on a USB key because everybody says, oh, I can't, I can't read. I have no time for books. The book is in the bathroom. The book is one thing. The book tells you about my story. But once you open up the book, after each chapter, it gives you takeaway questions that you need to answer. 92% of the people can't answer these questions. Not that they can't, they won't, because they have a hard time looking in the mirror to look inside themselves. So I challenge you, and by the way, uh, I have a, a whole stack full of these things that are available to all of you who come up and give me a business card. You're gonna get one of these complimentary eBooks. It's normally $14.99 if you buy them. But I'll tell you something, it will make a difference in your life. It can make a difference in your life. My father, who happened to be a very, very strict person, asked me many years ago, he says, to come with him to Hanover, uh, Germany. And I said, you know, Hanover, Germany, I said, if you're gonna tell me all the things, you're gonna show me all the places you've been through, Dachau, and all the places, I'll go with you. And he, for some reason, said yes. So we wound up in Dachau one day, and it was late in the afternoon, it was a museum, 
and he was in, there was a bunker, there's one bunker that's still standing, and he said, David, why don't you step out? I need to stop, uh, uh, I need to stop in, in Davin Mincha, for whatever reason. This Mincha was longer than the one you do Erevim Kippur. It was like the longest Mincha I've ever heard. And I got nervous because I looked at the time, they're going to lock us in. So when he came out, I didn't ask him because I saw his face, all kinds of colors, and he tur I turned around to him and I said, Dad, you know, they're going to lock us in here. We got to get out of here quickly. He says, they didn't keep me then, and they're not going to keep us now. What he did was he turned the me into a we. Alone, if you're alone, you're in bad company. If you seek out a mentor, a coach, a, a friend, an, a, an employer, someone who you care about, that cares about you, and you seek out their help to help you get those goals, it becomes a we. And we can be very, very, very successful. I will tell you this, you know, I've been around the world many times. Uh, currently, I, I do my coaching. I don't do anything but coaching. Instead of me allowing someone to work for somebody and help them earn millions of billions of dollars every single year, my job is to help each individual person one by one to, for, them, for them to be the best that they can be. And it started 10 years ago with ITCON. ITCON was my first, one of my first clients. And I got there through a family member. It was all referrals. I did not have to go out there to seek uh, uh, advertise, I never advertised in my life, but that's how I started my business. And what we're here to do is to help you be yourself, be your, into, in your business. Now, there's a lot of roads to take, but the bottom line is this. If you are ready to take the bull by the horn, if you are ready to start working on yourself, and I'm not going to say that you're going to be 100%, if you're going to be doing better today than you did yesterday, better next week than the week before, you're going to get better and slowly before you know it, it's going to make a big difference in your life. I'm a big believer in the business of selling. I've been in sales for 40 years. That's what I know. But I'm a big believer in personal development. And I've been in personal development for over 33 years. And I happen to merge it. So if I merge it and I bring my personal development into my sales, I become a better salesperson. And that's what we're here to do, is help you be the best that you can be. Joel talk about it. Joe talked about it before with the, the gentleman from Bitcoin. And um, you know, I'm here to answer questions. I'm here to give out these little keys to success. But you know what? You're only gonna be successful, or you could be successful, if you answer the questions in this book. I thank you for listening. I thank you for being here. I thank you for everything that you, you're doing to help yourself and your family be successful. Let me be part of it. It doesn't cost you anything. Here it is. It's absolutely free. Thank you very much for listening.